Hey Neppers, it's me, Wild Neptune, and this is part 3 of our World Arena Season 5 tier list. Today is going to be the Water Element Unit. Now, before that though, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and catch me at Twitch, at twitch.tv slash wildneptune. Okay, brief overview of the tiers if you have missed the other videos, and they'll be down in the description below if you want to catch up, but dominant tier right here, it is going to be the units that are going to see the meta warping abilities will dictate your drafts, your pre-bans, your post-bans, everything will be revolving around these units basically. Your meta units, these are units that are going to be the bulk of most traditional drafts you'll see. Alternative substitutes for units up here in the meta slot. Or maybe sometimes there's going to be a redundancy that you need. Specialized, there's going to be counter picks or things that are very composition specific. Out of the meta slash meme, things that are maybe strong on paper but just doesn't really fit right now. Or things that are just kind of funny. And then also not usually viable. These are units that well, for whatever reason, aren't strong enough to see play at all. With that being said, let's get started. We will start off with A. Momo. And right now, she's going to be out of the meta. For a very brief time, when World Arena just opened up, A. Momo was actually a semi-valuable pick in some cases as a cleanser um, and saw some even niche usage in Seasons 2 and 3, I would say. But she doesn't quite do enough anymore as a lot of other units can reach relatively high ER levels, have more bulk, and just do a little bit more for your team than Momo does. Um, still probably a really good pick lower down in the rankings, but definitely don't see her at all um, higher up. Cerise is going to be a specialized hero. Um, she's part counter pick. Part cleave, part utility, right? She doesn't really fit into one particular role a lot of the times. She's picked a lot with, say, Caesarea. So if you do see her early, um, you might want to get ready for a Caesarea pick by your opponent too. Um, otherwise, the days where you see her in cleave all the time, that's gone. Cleave from... My experience doesn't pick her um, that often anymore. Maybe like, I would, it's honestly, against me at least, uh, Klee plays don't pick her that much, right? Um, why? It, it, it's, hard, it's hard for me to say. Uh, also with things like G-Purgus, largely out of the meta too, her usage against him has kind of fallen off. Even like last season when she was relatively strong, um, she wasn't really being picked as much anyway. And the downward trend has just continued. But in certain circumstances, she's still going to be really strong. Uh, Shu is um, even post buff. Doesn't really have enough value, I would say, to seriously be considered as a damage dealer um there are just stronger ice damage dealers or water damage dealers in the game and one of them is going to be the big booba dragon lady herself luna who i would say right now she is kind of in between meta and alternative um I'll put it right now in meta. Honestly, water still suffers from where... No, she, her, her use, like, she she's strong with the beam meta, but her use cases right now is going to be alternative. And water still suffers from the fact that they don't have a lot of burst damage dealers um, other than Luna and Kisei, who we'll talk, to, talk about in a minute. And... They just don't quite have the mega value 
that the other elements have in their DPS, like Landy with Grass, Charlotte for Fire, right? But still really strong, right? It's just that you typically don't look to the water element for your damage source. Speaking of damage, though, we are going to talk about Kisei. Um, she fits right in with Luna here, I would say. Um, Kisei could be higher, but with Carrot kind of falling off too, one of Kisei's big counter targets has uh, been, you know, gone. So Kisei is also not picked this often. She's still really strong, right? And she still is picked. It suggests that her overall value has lowered by a little bit. Uh, Water Rose, uh, she's another S3 CR pusher, and most of those have been taken out of the meta. Um, again, and a lot of this is because of Politis, right? Uh, Politis has basically destroyed pure S3 CR pushers from being used right now. DN. Uh, DN is going to be an alternative pick right now. Um, she's still really strong in those stall out like defensive compositions but if you're looking for an attack buffer you have maid you have amelia right um uh just those two units being so good has made another unit that is also very strong like the yen to be definitely a more niche uh pick the cigarette so cigarette obviously one of the best units you can use for wyvern Unfortunately, even with Extinction, not really viable for World Arena. Now we have Ice Dominil, the Scam, the MLM. Um, I have used Ice Dom a lot against Cleave. And I'm going to say she's a legit anti-Cleave unit. Um... Her success rate against, like, most tra tra traditional powerful cleaves is actually really high. She definitely has a higher win rate than loss rate. And it's, like, really high. Like, I'm pretty sure if I draft her against powerful cleave and she's not banned, she, she's, she wins, like, 80% of her matches, which is... About the chance that she has to proc her um, S2 on an AoE. It's actually, I actually think it's, it's a little bit high than 80%, right? But that's, bas that's basically what her, what her win rate is. And she gets banned too sometimes when I draft her. Which is like insane to think about for me. Um, now remember, I'm only one person and... I do have a relatively strong anti uh setup. So she she's probably not the first unit you're going to use or build for anti cleave, but is she valuable in anti cleave? Yes. I I do think she is a legitimate anti cleave unit. I I do think she's actually good. Not a scam, no MLM, um legit good. Dizzy uh, Dizzy has been out of the meta for a long time. Again, a lot of stuff punishes low impact AoEs like Dizzy has. And also with all the cleanses and with just immunity on in the first turn and the ways just to kind of deal with uh, stuff Dizzy does, um, is just a little bit too dangerous to pick right now. Uh, Amelia. Amelia is going to be more of a specialized unit as a counter pick. Uh, with Car again, with, like Kisei, with Carrot being gone, one of the things that she was really good against kind of vanished. But not bad against things like Charlotte. Um, not bad against things maybe like a Rem occasionally, right? Uh, kind of hard to pick Amelia, though, as she will often take the place of one of your other supports or maybe DPS too. So you do have to kind of judge whether or not when you do pick her, if you have enough damage to actually win the match. Uh, Edda. Uh, Edda is going to be a debuffer 
that doesn't have a strip in her kid, and therefore she's, uh, well, not usable. However, speaking about the buffers with strips in their kit, that's going to be Fairy Teltaneria. And right now, I would say she's one of the dominant heroes. Um, Fairy Teltaneria, she's definitely not as ubiquitous with the first pick as she was when she first came out. And you might not even see her in, like, every single match. You probably won't. But maybe I see it once every, like, seven matches, something like that. Uh, however, she is so strong that she has made FCC the best first, like, the best first night to pick again. Uh, for a little bit, there was an argument where FCC was no longer the best first pick. But however... With the research as a fairy tale, if FCC is available, is available, just to have it where you have a protect, you have protection against fairy tale, FCC is just that valuable. Um, that's that's how strong fairy tale has. Um, fairy tale is. She can totally change the landscape of your post ban, your last picks, stuff like that when she is um, in a team. Even when she's mid-picked, you always have to consider where, okay, if they pick Fairy Tail, what am I going to do? So, um, Flan is going to be specialized now. Uh, more recently, there, there have been more Flan in uh, Cleave teams popping up where before there was almost no flans at all. And this does have to do with the fact that flan can be used in some cleave teams without book. And that might be valuable in the future with another unit coming in that, well, you know, negates book. Next up, we have Crow, And he's going to be the first water unit to go into the meta tier. Um, Crow has always been a good pick and this is because he can protect and he can also attack right his defensive abilities with his s2 um and stuff like that will always be valuable but his true power comes from his s3 and the ability just to uh erase some units and do heavy damage to another one um this changing defense into offense power is why he is so strong. Um, just really good against a lot of incidental damage. Because the more it like that AoE damage you might do, just means that Crow is one step closer to uh, stampeding you, I, I guess. Yuna. Uh, right now, Yuna's, I would say, not viable. Yuna's one of those weird cases where she's always, like, really close to being good. But there's just too many things that um, counter her right now. So, speaking of counters, SSB is going to be a specialized pick now. Um can be valuable in a lot of cases, right? It's just that, like Yuna um, and other AoE damage dealers, there are just things that will make it so that you can only last pick her a lot of the times or just be screwed over if, like, they pick, say, Rowana, L LRK, right? And it's like, what do you do in that case? Um, so, still strong as a counter pick, but definitely... A dangerous pick in a lot of cases. Uh, Rem. So, Rem is going to be a meta pick right now. Um, Rem is one of the few units that isn't very consistent, but her RNG value is so high that you are willing to take the hits in that consistency because when she goes off, she you just win, right? Rem is the... Um, RNG queen of this season. She wins games that you should absolutely not have won before. 
Um, so, and finally, we'll have the other ReZero collab water unit, which will be Amelia, who we're going to dominant. And if pe people asked a lot of other players whether or not they would thought they would think that Rem or Amelia would be better, most players would say Rem, and Rem is very good, right? But Amelia is on another level. Amelia, um, she cycles really fast. She her S two every other turn is really strong. Attack buff, beef, um, a push, and a cleanse. She's basically a lots on crack, right? And a two uh debuff cleanse too for AOE on her S three with a berry and a heal. <laughs> Rem. Um, is good. Amelia is busted. Anyway, that is the water element list. Do you agree with this? If so, or if not, tell me why below in the comments. Anyway, I'm all Neptune. It's been a good one. Nep out.